Hi, Dave Youngquist. Welcome to Last Cavalry TV. This is part two of painting German World War II splinter camouflage. We'll be using the Falschirmjäger 1944 kit from Andrea, which we had prepped in the last video. Reference the German Camouflages book, also from Andrea. And, of course, I'll be using the splinter camo paint set. Let's just jump right in. So I've spent quite a bit of time practicing for this video, so you can see I got quite a bit done, but there is going to be a, a patch on the back that we're going to uh, uh, demonstrate today. It just takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, and really just study, you know, the camouflage pattern. Um, the Andrea paints have worked absolutely uh, perfectly, can't recommend them highly enough. So now you see the area that we are going to paint today. So, as you remember, we applied the Andrea base color, washed it with the Andrea shadow color, these are all from the paint set, and then added some highlights mixed with the base to create our highlights. We're going to start with the brown color now for the, uh, for the camouflage pattern. It's a reddish brown, and we're going to thin it out quite a bit because we really don't want to have super bright colors or uh, very opaque colors while we're uh, creating this pattern. Okay, let's do this on camera. <laughs> So you can see the paint is very thin. And remember, the splinter pattern is very geometric. We do not want any soft or rounded edges, so I'll keep refining this. I, I do not have the figure in a vise, so it's, yeah, you'll see it's going to shake a little bit, but that's me just holding the figure. There. Okay. Extend that out a bit. Oh my gosh, it looks like a horse. We'll have to adjust that. Okay. Let's change the shape a bit more. I'm using a uh, number one brush from Windsor Newton. And again, you can always go back in and add more color to the inside, but I, I, I want to keep the, the paint thin because if we get paint buildup, then it's not going to look realistic. You're going to have ridges between your, uh, you know, let's say this brown color and the base color. So keep the paint thin. You can paint the inside again, just like I'm doing. There, it's starting to get where I want it to go. Get some more of the brown. There. A little bit more on the inside. And go up into the shoulder area. Now, because I'm painting on camera, it's kind of a tough angle for me, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do some touch-ups if necessary off camera. But, you know, because I've studied the pattern quite a bit, I really, I'm not thinking about um, so much what I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing it. So, our green color. Now, the green color, remember, always touches the brown and in much smaller shapes. There you go. And if you slop up a little bit, it's okay. Uh, painting any kind of camouflage pattern is really a matter of just back and forth, back and forth. Just, you know, trying to get it right. Make a mistake, no big deal. Just paint over it, wipe it out, whatever you have to do. There. Keep a lot of open space of the base color. Yeah, a little more of the 
green there. But you'll also notice that the, the green blotches are uh, much smaller uh, in area than the, uh, than the brown. Oop, I'm going to tighten that brush up. There we go. Okay. There, pattern continues underneath the uh, the Y strap, and go back and straighten the lines up. Remember geometric pattern. Okay, and just a bit more green, and this will just about complete the uh, the splotches. And coming up, well, yes, I forgot. <laughs> the uh, we got a little bit of highlights. So what we're going to do is we take the uh, what they call the the highlight color. We mix that into the green. So combination of those two, just, and not too not too much of a high highlight because we want this to look faded, but just just to make it pop a little bit because we are going to be applying washes over this. Again, always remember to apply the uh, the highlights to the uh, the camo colors where a highlight would naturally occur if the sun was at twelve o'clock in this particular example. Just a little bit there on the edges. Then we'll do the same for the brown color. So you can see, yep, mix those two. Just a little bit lighter. There. And you notice I'm not applying a lot of it, just enough to a little bit of contrast. There. Okay, our shadow color. We are going to apply a wash again over the entire area. Now this has to be very, very thin. This is a great color. It's actually a color in this set that I've been using on uh, many other figures as a, a shadow color and also as a, an overall wash. And what this is going to do is really tone the colors down and also bring them together. Now make sure these colors, <clears throat> your green and brown, have dried <clears throat> uh, ahead of time, otherwise you're going to pull that paint off. I just jumped off camera for a minute and hit it with the hair dryer. Now I'm using another brush. It's an inexpensive uh, brush just to get rid of some of the, uh, the excess. And we're back to our original brush just to pull those shadow colors down into the, uh, the shadow areas. Back to our uh, nylon brush. It's just a Da Vinci, you know, three, four dollar brush. And then back and forth, so pulling that that shadow wash down, you know, into all the crevices. Okay, back to our base color. You can see it's starting to tone down now. So we'll take a bit of the base, restore some of the uh, restore some of the highlight areas, because we are going to be adding a few more washes. We just want these areas to pop a little bit more. Yeah, right up in there. Again, spot where light would be hitting. There. Okay. Now, once again, going back with the shadow color. Because we need to pull those highlights down just a little bit and feather them out. I just thought of the... Uh, the areas in shadow just needed to be just a little bit darker. So you notice I'm using two brushes quite often. One to lay the, uh, the wash in and one to feather it out. Now, uh, the dreaded splinters. This is what has taken all the time uh, between the last video and this video. Learning how to do this. The paint consistency is critical. And you're going to make mistakes. I make tons of mistakes. You're going to have to make lots of corrections. 
It's okay. Just take your time and know that you can always go back. But you have to keep these lines, these small little splinters, parallel to one another. If one goes, you know, slightly cockeyed, it's going to look weird and your OCD will kick in and you're done. So you can see already one, one splinter is a little bit bigger than the others. We'll go back and fix that. Remember that paint consistency. So you want it pretty thin, but not so thin that it's going to be completely translucent. So about the consistency of a milk, I guess, would be. But it's just trial and error. Just keep trying, trying, trying. As you can see, I painted the the rest of his uh, his uniform uh, just in practice. And I'm still going to make mistakes. We're st still going to make corrections. That's okay. But if the paint is, you know, seemingly uh, flowing well, just keep going. If you got to go back and touch something up later, fine. Back to the base. We got to do some touch-ups. So I got to straighten that out. Let's see, that one was off a little bit. Yeah, same there. Now you're never going to get it 100% perfect, but you just want to get, you know close and of course we are going to uh, apply uh, some more fading to this and that will help so we're going back in with the brown we've got to do a little bit of a clean up there you notice I'm working in real small areas too there try to keep just trying to keep the lines uh, parallel more of the green. So like I said, I mean, I, I spent a couple weeks just practicing, you know, trying to get this. And then we go back in with the with the splinter. They tend to work best in groups of three. You know, on the original, that's really not the case. But, you know, what we're trying to do is just replicate here, trying to, you know, create a, uh, you know, an image of what the original was. Or representation, probably a better word. Okay, back in. There, now... We're going to take a bit of the base color. And again, I did a bit of cleanup off camera on those. I didn't want to, you know, waste 15 minutes of this video just watching me, you know, try to straighten those lines up. But I'm going to make a wash right now of the base color. And we're going to apply that right over. Again, make sure the other colors have dried. And we're going to wash this right over there, which will, again, help bring uh, our blotches together and the splinters together. And give us a nice even tone. We're going to feather that out with the dry brush. I should have mentioned that the uh, the uh, the cheap brush. It's a it's a flat brush, very inexpensive, but it should be dry. And now you can see how it's coming together. Everything has been toned way down, and the colors are starting to really work together. And I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking. So this has been Dave Youngquist, Last Cavalry. Next video coming up will be our 2018, the year in review. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope uh, some of these uh, techniques will be helpful for you. See ya! Ooh.